before there were cars. Imagine yourself being in a world without cars, and then make the comparison with cloud in your mind. I don't have to explain everything over here, I guess. Uh, so, let's, let's think Mr. Ford. Eh? I mean, the guy who said, we only need two polos of a car, black and black, a long time ago. And if this guy would have talked to his customers, talking about a car, the customers would have said, hey, I want a faster horse. And they wouldn't have said, hey, I want a car, because I didn't know what a car is. Same story with analysts. The analysts would say, hey, the horse is here to stay, the automotive stuff is a kind of a new thing. Well, not true. Look at the amount of cars in the world these days. Eh? Engineers, what they did for the next six or seven years, they would design cars with kind of the stuff to put a horse in front of it. The horse not needed anymore. So the world's changing, you have to adapt. And the marketing people say, well, I mean, there won't be more than one million units needed in the world on average, which is not true. There are 600 million cars these days. Eh? Remember the wise guy from IBM? Not sure for IBM people in the room, I love you, but the wise guy might say, who said, hey, there are five, there's a market for five computers in the world. Well, I mean, you probably all have more processing power in the back of your pocket if you have a Windows phone than anybody else. Anyway, so, one of the things I do a lot without, I mean, so my background is in management consulting. I have a, a presentation stuff, I can back, come back next year and talk about disruptive thinking, which is a fun thing to do to make companies think differently. And I do it a lot in Microsoft because we need that now and then. And I've got some rules. And this is one of the rules, I just wanted to give them to you. You cannot plan for the future if you don't know what you're not prepared for. I mean, all of you who plan and say, hey, tomorrow the sun's going to shine, so I go to the beach. What happens if it rains? Ever thought of that? Most people come up with plan B on the spot. Eh? I would encourage you to think about two, three steps ahead. Anyway, so what is cloud? For Microsoft, cloud is nothing else than kind of computing. That's all about connecting the internet, using the internet scale to connect devices and endpoints. And devices is not only PCs eh, or phones or cars or whatever. Devices are also refrigerators. I don't know if anybody of you looked at the refrigerator of the future. Well, it's here. Eh? I mean, Siemens has those refrigerators. We're connected to the internet where you can say, hey, I need two bottles of milk and two, two pieces of cheese and whatever as a minimum stock. If it's gone, it orders it itself at the local grocery. So cloud is much more than PCs. Eh? And you can laugh, but wait uh, five years when I'm back, hopefully. You have those refrigerators in your house. Same for cars. I mean, we're working on the car PC, which is a kind of PC in your car, which is very intelligent. Think about advertising, and ladies and gentlemen, the advertisers in the room. I mean, it's location based. You're driving in your car, it knows a lot about you. So I could be driving around, and the car would remind me, hey, it's your wife's birthday tomorrow. The roses are half price in the store over there. Why don't you go there and pick up some roses? And you can laugh again. Well, I'll be back in five years. Anyway, whatever. Uh, so, so, like I just said, uh, cloud computing is just a transformation of the industries. It's not something new, like Gartner wants it to be on IDC. Not offensive to Gartner and IDC, but I hate the 0.5 probability things, because for me, it rains or it doesn't rain. It doesn't rain 50%. I mean, it's quite different. Anyway, so, it's all about next generations. I mean, we started with mainframes, then, then the, the Apple guys came in with the Macs, and then we came in with the PCs. Uh, client server stuff came in. Internet came in, and then now there's cloud computing. A lot of people ask me, hey, is, is cloud computing kind of going back to client server? Well, it could be. It, I think it's true. But it combines all the previous states into a new thing. It's not something completely different. It's been there for a while. It's just an evolution of technology. I mean, I remember being at McKinsey in 1991, two, two, and I had the first mobile phone. I mean, I don't know if anybody of you was old enough to remember the first mobile phones in this room. Eh? Well, I do, and you had a kind of phone, you had a backpack with batteries <laughs> to carry it around. And I was sitting in a train, and people were looking at me, what is he doing? He's talking to himself. He's crazy. <laughs> I would have an empty part in the train, because nobody dared to sit next to me, because I was the guy talking to himself all the time. Well, I mean, things change fast, and you have more processing power in your pocket than the Apollo 13, or 12, or whatever. 13 Quest, I think. That's an Apple, and the 12 then. <laughs> so, anyway. So, it, and it's not about technology yet, because, I mean, that's why I asked for the IT guys in the room. It's not about technology. I'd rather stay away from technology. Sorry for the Microsoft people in the room. I only have one slide on Microsoft, over the rest I don't even care who I am. I, I want to talk about cloud today. So, if you look at the different phases of technology, we start with mainframes. I mean, it was all centralized, thin clients, hassle-free IT. Then it came in PCs, PCs and servers for distributed, uh, distributed computing power, etc., etc. And now we're in the cloud with large data centers, everything being centralized. I mean, my team did a piece of research where we kind of predict, hey, how many host service providers will be there in 12 years or 10 to 12 years? And we think there are only going to be four of them in the world left. Large scale service providers. Google is going to be one of them. Microsoft is hopefully going to be one of them. Apple will probably do some interesting things. And Amazon will be there. 
for the rest we think there's no market for those guys. Doesn't mean that if you're a hoster, you should leave now. We should talk afterwards where you should go. Anyway, so, and, and think about economic. I mean, mainframe was kind of optimized for efficiency because mainframes are very expensive and that's where our IBM friends still make a lot of money. Uh, client server was optimized for agility because people wanted to take their PCs or MacBooks or whatever they have anywhere. And cloud is all about efficiency and agility and I'll talk about that later on. The business models are different. I mean, if you're an IBM customer, you know how your mainframe invoice looks every month or every three months. Uh, client server, that's where Microsoft made a lot of money. We have the licenses. And then cloud is kind of pay as you go, which changes the world radically, radically, even for Microsoft. So I think the biggest journey Microsoft has ever gone through is happening now in Microsoft. We're going away from a software model to a services model. Microsoft is becoming a services company, which is a whole other presentation I can do if you have an hour left. I don't think so. <laughs>